Hey everyone, today we're going to continue my journey to become a mediocre Sun Microsystems Solaris administrator from the mid-2000s, so you don't have to. More specifically, we're going to netboot the Sunfire X2200 from 2006 over my network. We'll throw one of these old blank hard drives in there and use a feature of Solaris Sun's Unix OS, which lets us boot this thing over the network and install a fresh copy on the local hard drive. We'll get a Solaris 10 VM set up in my Proxmox instance. We'll use that as the network server to netboot this guy over the network and get a fresh copy of Solaris installed here without using this disk drive. I think it's going to be a nightmare. Let's get into it. So as much as I'd love to walk you guys through my uh, killer disk burn and setup here, I actually do use this thing. It's all broken and you have to move the mechanism yourself. That wouldn't be any fun. Booting over the network is A, way cooler, and B, I don't have any disks anyway, and C, I think this disk drive is hideous and I want to use it as little as possible. So let's get that VM set up. All right, so through the magic of television, I have a Solaris x86 VM installed here in my Proxmox instance. This was no small feat, and it's pretty jarring to see something that says setting up Java when you're installing an OS. But anyway, it's I swear this looks different every time I boot it. It's like counting down or something. So let's get in here. This happens to be a version of Solaris that is has Oracle branding on it, we might see. But as far as I can tell, it's from 2007. The code hasn't been altered. The Oracle just came in and threw their logo on stuff. So uh, I think it's I think it's period correct for, for the machine. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is get this thing set up as an install server. So what I've got going on here is I have the Solaris 10 CD mounted on the VM. It's actually the exact ISO I use to install on this VM. And on that thing, there's gonna be some tools we can use to set this up as a network, netboot server. So the first thing we're gonna do is make a directory for all our install files to live. So let's do um, desktop sol 10 x86. Next, we're actually gonna navigate into the CD-ROM that's mounted, and this is my first time using Solaris or any Unix variant, really, and you're gonna find, as I go through this, is if you're familiar with Linux, it's this just subtle odd oddities and differences. So here I'm gonna dive into the CD-ROM contents, and it's at the root CD-ROM, CD-ROM zero, and we'll jump into Solaris 10, and the Solaris ISOs come with some tools. So we can say, I'll ls this for you. So we have one called setup install server. I, I suspect they're just bash scripts. Let's take a look. Yep, bash scripts from 2003. Anyway, all right, so what we're gonna do is run setup install server and then pass it the path to the empty folder we just made. So desktop Solaris 10 x86. And what this thing's gonna do is very slowly, in my experience, copy everything from the disk image, the CD image, to the local folder uh, to get us set up so that we can add some clients that can boot from it. And we'll dive into that after this is done. All right, so that's wrapped up about 15 minutes later. And so now what we're gonna do is go to that folder we made that's on our desktop. Let's take a look. And now it has a copy of all the files from the CD. As far as I can tell, that's all that thing does. And we'll actually go into that directory, into the tools, and we have another file we can run called add install client, this guy right here. And so what this is gonna do is set up a particular named boot file for a architecture of our choosing that the machine over there is gonna be able to grab over the network and boot from. And so let's, let's run that add install client dash D. We're gonna call it X2200. That's just the name of the boot file. And we'll go into that in more detail in a second. And this is the I, 86 PC family group, according to Sun. So we'll do that. And now we can see it has set up an NFS server to, to share that thing. And it's hosting it at this IP here. And it has a boot file called X2200. So now we're gonna get into something called Pixie booting or PXE. All right, so I made you a presentation. I hope you like it about PXE pronounced Pixie, which stands for Preboot Execution Environment. And so basically what's gonna happen here is the machine, a Sunfire X2200 in our case, has the capability in its network NIC to do something called Pixie or boot off the network. And so 
the first thing that's going to happen is it's going to want to talk to my router. In my case, I have a UDM Pro. This could be any DHCP server. And it's going to do a DHCP broadcast to the router and say, hey, I want a netboot. Do you know anything about that? And the router is going to say, yep, I know about someone at 192.168.214. We're going to configure it to do this. And I know they have a boot file for you called x2200. That's the one we just set up on the Solaris VM. And at this point, the Sunfire is going to start talking to our VM. So my VM it happens to be at 192.168.1.214 on my network. The router told the Sunfire Nick to go look there. And they're going to start talking to each other and transferring files so that this thing can boot from the install server. Grossly oversimplified. <laughs> There's a couple different things going on in the background, but that's the gist of it. So now let's hop over to the UDM Pro, get it configured to actually respond like that to the Sunfire, and we should be good to go. All right, so here we are over in the settings page for the network that that machine's going to be on for in my UDM Pro router. And if we scroll down to DHCP, we'll see that we have this DHCP service management area where we can say show options. Scroll down and sure enough, we see an option for DHCP network boot. So we'll enable that. I've already been in here and tried this, but we'll put in the IP of that VM at 214, the file name x2200 that we set up and we'll click apply. And yeah, it's that easy. So now we're going to move on and do a little TLC on the machine, get the hard drive in there and see if we can get this thing net booting. All right, this thing's been complaining about a CMOS battery and I can see it behind this shroud here, so it should be pretty easy. Of course, my favorite part of this machine. <laughs> and looks like it is a 2032. I think I have one of those. Try to keep these on hand, or at least the common ones. Yep, there's one down in there. All right, get that back in there. Shroud back on. Yep. Old one is totally dead. All right, I got a few of our options here. Um, this is a SAS drive. I've got like 20 of these things. I was talking all that smack in the other video, and I can't get this X22 to recognize SAS drives, <laughs> even though the spec sheet says it can. So don't know what's up with that. So we'll try one of these SATA drives. It's got a pretty nice little caddy. So yeah, we'll get that screwed on and in the machine. All right, so I've got you pointed at the screen here and we're going to start the slow and very loud process of netbooting this server. So I'll speed up the boring bits. So on this machine, I can press F12 to just go right into network boot. And here you can see it's rolling through its network mix and trying to see if uh, any have a cable attached to them, basically. And hopefully we'll end up with on the NIC I've got plugged in, and we should see it try to network boot. So that one's gonna fail. It's got four NICs on it. <laughs> this one's gonna fail. I think one of the next ones is gonna hopefully succeed. So you can see it's complaining about can't find a Pixie ROM. And there it goes. So this NIC is finding at 168.1214, you can see how we set it. It's finding a boot, and <laughs> look, at, look at that. We've got a Grub bootload screen, Solaris 10. Let's do enter. This part takes forever. All right, and here you can see it's complaining about error 25 disk read error. So the only, this just happens sometimes. And the only solution I found is rebooting the Slayer's 10 VM, running the add client again, and then rebooting this machine. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go try that. Okay, we're back. Uh, let's try this again. <laughs> okay, you can see Sun OS release 5.10. It's on its way. Five minutes of my life, I'll knock it back. But All right, it's working. Okay, I'm gonna choose one Oracle Solaris Interactive because that's the coolest looking one. And you can see uh, we've got a little foreshadowing here. It's complaining about the hard drive. <laughs> uh, and there's that what I was talking about earlier, setting up Java. Kind of interesting. 
we're getting somewhere. Just trying to set up the windowing system. Okay, here we go. We'll do English. Uh, this is asking us if we want to do the graphical user interface installation. I do. April 19th, 2007. Here we go. So this window just wants you to input some more stuff. It's going to ask for the language. Here we go. This is what I was talking about with that Oracle branding. All this stuff is clearly from 2007, well before Oracle bought Sun, but they, they came back through and rebranded a bunch of stuff. Alright, this machine has several NICs. It's actually smart enough to choose the one that's plugged in. I don't want IPv6. Kerberos, I haven't messed with it. I think it's some sort of security app that came with Unix or with Solaris if you wanted it. We don't have a name service, so Solaris or maybe all Unix variants, they're really big on having a name server like LDAP, you know, to log in as a company to a big Unix system. Um, obviously we don't have one here. That's fine. America's United States Mountain Time, baby. All right, our, our battery's working. That's good. This is just asking if you want to keep SSH. Yep. Would not like to register my Oracle support information. Proxy, we don't have that. The summary. Let's see how far we get. Reboot, no, eject, whatever. So, where to get the install media? So I'm gonna say network file system. And you can see it's already pre-configured with my install server and the path to where it's gonna get the OS. Assign my life away to Oracle. Default installation, that's probably fine. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I was afraid of this. Okay. Um, yeah, I think this hard drive is having a really hard time. So it failed right away. So when the install fails, you get bumped. Uh, you get bumped to a terminal. Now, Solaris is very particular about the format the hard drive should be in. So you're probably going to get a message like that, even if you have a healthy hard drive and we'll, we'll dig in a little bit to this one I'm trying to use. And typically you could just say format uh, and if it can find the disk you can go ahead and come in here and then do F disk. You can see my thing, my disk is having trouble. Like <laughs> it's, it's in bad shape. Um, but usually you'd be able to come in here and format and I figured it something out. Sometimes Solaris, if you've got a disk in there that just has Linux partitions or whatever, it won't even recognize that the disk exists. And so let me show you a little trick I found. So if you take a look at config ADM, a lot of the time, this uh, your disk actually won't even be configured. So it'll say something like, so here's the empty SATA drive. It'll say unconfigured. And so you use this config ADM tool to configure which dri whichever drive you're trying to get to. So in my case, it's already configured, but a lot of the time Solaris won't, the installer won't even notice a, a totally legit drive. And you'll have to do that and then you'll have to format. So uh, let's have a look at this hard drive. All right, here's the hard drive situation. I've got plenty of these SAS drives, but I mentioned earlier, I can't get them to work at all in this thing. So then I've got this SATA drive from 2021. It doesn't, the BIOS won't recognize this at all. This is another SATA drive from 2009. It hates this one, tons of errors. And that left me with this one, which did seem to be behaving. But as you saw, the Solaris installer can't write to it properly. I can't format it properly. I plugged it into my Windows PC and messed around with trying to format it that way and got a little more success, but how about you have a listen for yourself?
I think we need a moment of silence for our fallen hero here. He made it 13 good years. So close, yet so far. <laughs> to be honest with you, I didn't even think I was going to get the pixie net boot working, so I'm calling that a win. I'm pretty confident that with a valid, you know, functional hard drive, I'll be able to get this installed over the net. To that end, I went on eBay and I've got two Hitachi Ultra Stars on the way. And these were the exact model numbers that shipped in a particular configuration you could buy from Sun back in 2006 for this server. So assuming those work, I think we're going to be in good shape. But we're not done with uh, any of this hard drive stuff quite yet. Might be in the market for a V120 faceplate here. As you'll recall, this one came with a SCSI drive. Haven't seen what's on there yet. Hopefully it's just got a, an instance of Solaris on there and we'd be good to go. But I also picked up like seven or eight more SCSI drives used on eBay. And this is the only thing I have that can read SCSI drives. And I wanna see what's on these and if they work. So eventually gotta get this thing wired up and booting. And so we can check out these hard drives, see what's on them or if they even work. And this one has a slightly different net boot process that might warrant its own video. I haven't tried it yet. I haven't done enough research, but kind of next on the list. So as always, thanks for watching. I hope you found this interesting, entertaining, and I'll see you in the next one.